Hi. In this video, we are going to deploy our Dockerize PHP application on a GCP virtual machine as a proof of concept with Docker Compose. This video assumes that you have seen all the other tutorials because they provide the fundamentals that we are going to use here. On a conceptual level, we are going to introduce yet another environment next to local and CI that we call prod for production. We will then build our Docker setup and we will bake the code base directly into the image as we did for the CI environment. Then we will create a so-called deployment archive that we transmit over to the virtual machine to run the actual deployment. This archive ensures that we can use make on the virtual machine. We have access to the Docker targets that we are used to from the local setup and it also provides a convenient deployment script. We are using the infrastructure that we have created in the previous video, how to deploy Docker applications on GCP via the gCloud CLI. For this video, I'm going to assume a couple of things. There should be a GCP project that has a configured container registry, a secret manager, and a running compute instance virtual machine that is fully provisioned. That means Docker is installed and the gCloud CLI is available and the root user is authenticated to use Docker. In addition, a service account should be created and a corresponding key file should live in the code base on the host system. Then we will use the key file to authenticate Docker locally and push the images that we have just built to the registry. Next, we will use the gCloud CLI, authenticated with the service account locally and transfer the deployment archive that we have also seen on a previous slide. Then we will extract and run the archive and that will pull the images from the registry retrieve the secrets from the secret manager that also includes a GPG key file that we stored in there. And then we will start the Docker containers and share the key file with the Docker setup. To make all of that work, we will be using a lot of the concepts from the previous video. Run PHP on Docker in a CI pipeline via GitHub and GitLab. We will use the prod environment to build our Docker setup and for production, we will create the images for all the Docker services. We will initialize the environment via the make init command that will provide the environment as a prefix to the docker compose command. In addition, the environment will be responsible for selecting the correct docker compose configuration files. Just to recap, we will build a docker image that includes the full code base, including all the encrypted files. When the containers are started, we will share a secret GPG key to decrypt the secrets on the fly when the container starts at runtime. I've created a corresponding production GPG key pair. So a secret key that is password protected. The password is simply 87654321 and also a corresponding public GPG key. That key has been added to git secret and the secrets have been re-encrypted so that we can decrypt it using the private key that we've just seen. The key and the password have also been added to the secret manager of GCP so that we can retrieve them later on the virtual machine. We already have a running VM called Dofroska task. And the only difference to the previous tutorial is the machine type, because we went from E2 micro to E2 small, because micro was not powerful enough to run the whole Docker setup. So far, nothing is running on that instance. So when we try to open the IP address in a browser, we won't see anything. Let's take a quick look on the instance. Log in as root. Check if Docker is installed. Check if Docker Compose is installed. Check if root is authenticated via the gcloud CLI to pull images. And double check that currently no containers are running. Let's initialize make with the prod environment and take a look at make docker build minus n to see the target without executing it. The docker compose command is prefixed with the env equals prod variable and that it uses all the docker compose configuration files that are relevant for the prod environment. Let's first take a look in the docker compose config file of the PHP base image. We can see that the build target will be set to the environment that is passed to the docker compose command. So in this case, prod. In the corresponding docker file, we find the prod target. As for the CI target, we are copying from the code base stage that still starts by installing all the composer dependencies, but for env equals prod, we will not install any dev dependencies. So no code quality tools and no PHP unit, for example. We also don't need the tests in the production image. 
We do, however, need the encrypted secret files so that we can decrypt them at runtime. We will first list all the files in a .secrets folder that contains all of our secrets. We will then get all the files that are not in a shared folder and not in the environment folder that we currently want to build and remove all those files. This ensures that in a production image, we actually only have the production secrets and in a CI image, we only have the CI secrets. And finally, we will copy the code base exactly as we did before to the application path. In addition, we are adding a custom entry point to our image that will decrypt the secrets on container startup. So let's take a look at the script, initialize make with the production environment and a GPG password that needs to be available as an environment variable. We'll then initialize GPG, retrieve all the secret files that are relevant for production and decrypt them. One of those files is for example, the .n file that we need to run our application. And finally, we ensure that all other commands are run out of this entry point so that our Docker setup can stay exactly the same. And finally, we copy over a build info file. We will create this file before the Docker images are built with a dedicated make target. This target will create a file in the .build directory slash build minus info and will then add some information to the file that are relevant to the build. So for example, the user that triggered the build, the current date, the git branch and the current git commit. Before we run an actual build, let's quickly check the Docker Compose configuration. As we expected, it contains all the services, Redis, the worker, FPM, Nginx, MySQL, and application. And for all services that are based on the PHP base image, we see that a volume mount was created that shares the secret GPG key with the container. Same for PHP FPM and the PHP worker. This is defined in the docker-compose.prot.yaml configuration file. That also lists an env file option that points to a file compose-secrets.env in the root of the code base. This file will contain the GPG password because we won't be able to manually pass it to Docker Compose when we start it, but it has to happen automatically because it is needed in the decrypt secret script that we have defined as an entry point. Before we make a deployment, let's try out this production environment locally and first create a build info file. Let's take a look at it. Next, we create the compose-secrets.env file that we need for the env file option and the content will be the gpg password that we need for the secret key. Then we copy the production key to secret.gpg and can finally run our Docker build. Start the Docker setup and take a look at the localhost. I've also added a new route to show the contents of the build info file. And we see that it's actually the content that we've just seen on the command line. Locally, everything seems to work. So let's push the images to the registry and deploy them to production. We run make docker push to push the images. And then lock into the virtual machine. In the last tutorial, we have learned that we can use the gcloud CLI to lock into the VM via SSH using IAP. And I have created a corresponding make target in a dedicated GCP sub make file so that I don't have to remember all of the arguments. We also have targets for running SSH commands, transferring files via SCP, retrieving secrets from the secret manager. And we have defined a couple of default variables that we need for GCP. Those variables live in our default variables.n file and include the project ID, the zone and the name of the virtual machine. Let's try it out and log into the virtual machine and start our Docker setup. Well, it's not quite so easy because we don't have the setup that is required to run make on the virtual machines quite yet. Locally, we had it in the code base, but on the virtual machine, we don't have our Docker Compose configuration files and we also don't have our make files. That's where the deployment archive that we've seen in the beginning of the video comes into play. The creation of this archive is also defined in its own make target called deployment create tar. The target will prepare a local deployment folder, copy the docker compose configuration files, copy the make files, copy a deployment script and a .env file for the docker setup. And finally create a tar archive that we can easily transfer to the virtual machine. Let's execute the target. 
and transferred to the virtual machine using the gcp scp command that we have just seen in the make file. The command uses gcloud compute scp under the hood and the transmission has been successful. Now let's log back into the virtual machine, copy the archive to the temp folder, log into the root account, switch to the temp folder, extract the tar archive, retrieve the secret gpg key and store it in a file called secret.gpg, retrieve the gpg password and store it in the compose-secrets.env file, initialize make with the production environment, pull the docker images, and start the containers. Check if they are up and running. And if we can now open the IP address in our browser. And now it works as expected. We can take a look at the info file and we see that it contains the same information that we've seen locally. So technically that's all we need. We made our first deployment and have now running Docker containers that are built for the production environment running on a GCP virtual machine available from the internet. But those have been far too many steps to remember. What we would like to do is remember a single target called make deploy that would handle everything for us. And exactly this target exists in our deployment sub make file. It will first perform some checks regarding changes in the code base. It will then make sure that our local gcloud CLI is authenticated switch to the production environment, create the build info file that we've already seen, run a Docker build, push the images to the registry, create the deployment archive, and then run the actual deployment on the virtual machine. Now this target is a little more interesting because it will first copy the deployment archive via SCP, will then create a deployment directory and ensure that it's empty. The directory is stored in this codebase directory variable that currently simply points to temp codebase extract the archive in that directory and will then, instead of executing the individual commands that we have just run on the virtual machine, a deployment script. This deployment script is also part of the deployment archive and it runs through the exact same steps that we have just done manually. By the way, if you have wondered why we can simply run docker push without having to retake the images as we needed to do in the previous video, then you just need to take a look in the arrivals.env file that contains the updated docker registry, our registry on Google Cloud. So when we take a look at the images, then we can see that they are already tagged with the correct registry. All right, then let's test out the deployment make target. Let's first create an empty commit with the message it changed build info so that we can verify that the docker images are actually updated then we run make deploy and we will first switch to the local environment and start the local docker setup to make sure that there are currently no changes in the secrets so that i don't have modified the unencrypted secret files because those wouldn't end up in the docker images we then check for any uncommitted changes because we only want to build our Docker images with the same contents as the Git repository. Then we ensure that the correct service account is activated. We switch over to the production environment, create the build info file, build the Docker images with the production environment, push the images to the registry. Again, this works because we have already tagged them correctly when we built them, create the deployment archive and copy the deployment archive to the virtual machine and then extract it and run the deployment script. The script will then retrieve the secrets, initialize make, pull the Docker images that we have just pushed, stop the containers that are currently running and start them with the new images. And finally, we do some cleanup and remove the deployment archive and switch back to the local environment. Let's now refresh the browser and we see the commit that we've just created. You can find a much more detailed article on my blog, pascallando.com under deploy docker compose php gcp poc. One word about the proof of concept, docker compose shouldn't really be used to run an application on production because one big benefit of docker is the separation of services into horizontally scalable containers. Since we are currently using just a single virtual machine, that kind of defeats the purpose. In addition, we use containers for MySQL and Redis and I would highly recommend to use managed services for those databases but it still shows all the necessary steps to get something deployed on production. You can find all other parts of the tutorial series under Docker PHP tutorial. And the full code base is as always available in the official Docker PHP repository on GitHub under part nine. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching.